Hey, what's up guys? Aaron over here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 23, my team career mode. This is episode number 37 today for the Brazilian Grand Prix in season two. If you guys did miss the previous one, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. A very chaotic Las Vegas Grand Prix once again on this game. A red flag involved, a bit of wet weather and an absolute howler by our engineering team. They put us on dry tires as we got going for a red flag restart whilst it was pouring down with rain everyone else on intermediates we were on mediums and as you can maybe guess it didn't end well that was a very frustrating Las Vegas GP not just for myself but the entire team of course because if you did watch that you would have seen for most of the Grand Prix or at least two-thirds Daniel Ricciardo was leading the way or battling for the lead with you know the Alpine of Esteban Ocon surprisingly and he was looking likely actually in the end of it to to go on to win the race really and then he suffered an engine failure so it was a double no points finish for this team and it meant that Ferrari have really caught up to us in the Constructors Championship Leclerc and Norris there only now 10 points behind me is Leclerc and then a further one point then is Lando Norris he also did not score to be fair as he had his own issues with uh, two DNFs in a row for the Brit in the Red Bull team and it's really been to Leclerc's benefit to, as he's now like firmly into the title fight you could say but now going into the Brazilian Grand Prix the biggest story going into this race weekend is the reigning world champion Lewis Hamilton has announced that he'll be retiring from Formula One of course he won the championship in this career series in season one to become an eight-time world champion and ever since then this entire season he hasn't really been electric it's almost like he's relaxed knowing that he's now beaten Schumacher's record he holds the record for the most world championships and very much like in real life you'd say once Lewis wins an eighth title you feel like he might be ready to say goodbye to Formula One and that's exactly what's happened here in the game he is ready to say goodbye to Formula One and won't be on this grid from next season that's going to be quite a massive hole for Mercedes to fill and unlike maybe previous games on this game in this career series so far with the driver market I really can't tell who's poised to make maybe replace him in the Silver Arrow alongside Russell. Let me know in the comments below who you reckon Mercedes might go for in the driver market. But yeah, the eight-time world champion Hamilton, Sir Lewis, won't be on the grid from season three. But for ourselves, we have to put that massive news behind us and focus on the task at hand. Three rounds to go and things are heating up. Ferrari are so close to us in the constructors that I really need to maybe get another upgrade on this car. Unfortunately, our aero department the quality control is not there. We've not had it all series. And that you know, really boosts the failure rate of these upgrades. So I'm going to go ahead and spend 1.1 million to upgrade that part of our HQ facility on the aero side. But that won't come in in time to purchase an upgrade with the lower failure rate. And if I look back at the timeline of air upgrades, the downforce upgrades that we've got left before we get bottlenecked by not having spec three, they're just not gonna come in time for even the last race of the season. The only upgrade that would be worthwhile making that's gonna come in in time for even the last race of this season is the ultimate weight redistribution upgrade. Now that is going to help the car, don't get me wrong. I would have loved to have had the two air upgrades, the front and the, and the rear one that, le that were left. Uh, on the aero side of things, but realistically, it's just not going to be worthwhile. I could have tried to rush rush the upgrade through to come in time for the second last race, but there was a 60% failure for that. You know, with, with this at least, it's pretty much a guarantee we'll have this upgrade come in for the Azam Marina, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. So, yeah, finally, we've been put into a difficult situation with our reduced R&D. Also, maybe the spending that we maybe should have done earlier in the season on the HQ facility for aero, and we've got to this bottleneck uh, place where basically now, from now to the end of the season we have one ultimate upgrade coming that chassis upgrade and that won't come in until the last race of the season so Sao Paulo and next race Jeddah is going to be exactly where we are we're staying put where our car is on the R&D chart and that's where we ended in Las Vegas as well so that that uh, that line you see for us in uh, electric green that's going to be a flat line all the way to Abu Dhabi whereas you can see Red Bull have taken another massive leap ahead 
ahead to become the best team on the grid. Very much so. Ahead of Aston Martin. Ferrari nip ahead of, ahead of us with a minor upgrade, it seems like. And Mercedes actually close up to us with some consistent upgrades from Las Vegas to now. So it's going to be a little bit interesting for sure. I think we're going to be on the back foot in terms of overall car pace. But weekends like this may just help us out. As you can see, it is pouring down with rain. And rain is always the great equalizer in racing. It's not just any rain. It's a, it's not M&S rain. It's, a, it's monsoon rain. It's monsoon rain at Brazil in qualifying. And it's on the Friday, of course. It's a sprint weekend. So it's a great equalizer. And with the sprint race, there's maybe double the chance to score some points on this race weekend. And maybe we can try and drag this car up a little bit higher than it technically maybe should be now that Red Bull Aston Ferrari ahead of us. Mercedes are so much closer to us. It's a very tight grid anyway, so the driver can make a difference and the rain probably will make a bit of a difference here. And I'm hoping it's going to be a positive uh, to, to my benefit. Uh, and, and it should be, I think, because we're going well in these first laps, I think. You know, gaining one second on this second flying lap, really getting into the groove after that first lap was just a banker. This is a much better lap. One point, nearly 1.1 seconds gain to go up to second place just behind Russell. The two Mercs are actually looking pretty damn good so those upgrades are working well for them as we go for a fourth flying lap this is actually by the end of it because the track was just improving and improving. I think it was monsoon rain right at the start of the session and it's got a little bit lighter, still under the umbrella of full wets needed but definitely the track is uh, getting a bit quicker as we're still gaining half a second alone in the second sector which is pretty mad in terms of like you know tr uh, gaining time around a circuit that's pretty much the same sort of weather condition so just getting comfier and comfier with this i'm running a much higher downfall setup i think 20 on the front wing 18 on the rear wing which is like five six clicks ahead of the default setup now that might hurt me in dry conditions but for this full wet quality because it's going to rain this entire friday this is going to help me out because we go second place, only six thousandths off P1. Ricardo only just about manages to go through into Q2, so that's a worry. Obviously, with that DNF from the lead, maybe he's taken a hit with focus and momentum, and he just won't be in a good headspace. And also, he'll be using a default setup, and this is where I think me going five clicks over on the front wing, on the rear wing, is going to help out quite a lot here because it's just going to give me that downforce we need in the corners. I think the sprint Sprint race is meant to be completely dry. Sunday does have some rain. That's why I've gone with this setup. I wouldn't have done that if there wasn't a chance of rain on Sunday because then we would have literally been a sitting duck. But the fact there's going to be rain in the, in the full Grand Prix means that if this kind of performance right here in qualifying translates into Sunday, we're going to be really good in those wet conditions. And in the dry, we'll just have to suck it up. Maybe, you know, try and use the battery a bit more cleverly, you know, on the straights to, to give us that kind of uh, extra balance on the straights, losing out in terms of drag. And right now, the second sector, purple. I've been doing purples all, all this Friday in the, in the second sector. And that's completely down to having this extra downforce across the line for another flying lab after a couple of others in Q2. And we get up into the top 10 shootout. Ricardo is knocked out, along with Sainz, to be fair, as well. Some other big names. Gasly, surprised to see him knocked out as Ocon looks to kind of push back a little bit. And Pierre Gasly's kind of dominance in the Alpine team as the two kind of struggle to be the team leader off that breakout little bit performance from Gasly winning the Italian Grand Prix, of course, just a few episodes ago. But uh, Ricardo's out just showing the default setup on this car maybe isn't the way to go. And also just he's just not now maybe as quick as he was pre the DNF at Las Vegas. For us, I'm feeling good. I genuinely think we can compete for the top spots here on the Friday to set ourselves up for the grid, for the sprint. And then obviously what happens in the sprint, we're going to have to see in dry conditions. We'll try and do our best. But right now I'm just focused on trying to maximize this pace we've got in the wet. You know, the car's feeling pretty planted in sector two. Obviously still have to feather the throttle, be a bit careful with some of the turnings, but it seems like compared to the cars around us, we've got that pace. Another purple in the second sector. This tactic of putting the wings a lot higher is working well. Even with a bit of a slide as we go up the hill, we're going to still be one second up on our banker first flying lap. This is the proper flying lap with the lowest amount of fuel across the line. And it's going to be provisional pole position for the sprint. I must say asterisk, not full pole position. Sprint 
pole position ahead of Verstappen. And it looks like at the end of this session, others have improved. Alonso is going to be alongside me, maybe on the front row. Russell and Hamilton locking up the second. The Mercedes upgrades have worked well here. And the two Mercs are ahead of the Red Bulls and the Ferrari. We've not improved on our third flying lap there. Had a bit of a shocker in the second sector. But it won't matter. We maintain this P1 and we'll be on pole for the sprint race tomorrow. Um, I think maybe my second only ever pole position in a qualifying on this game so far. And ironically, it's come in wet conditions where usually I would say I'm not that great. But the setup we did just worked so much better. Clearly all the AI on default set up. And so that just was to our benefit. This is going to be the real litmus test though. This sprint race on Saturday may be a struggle because of that downfall setup. Because I now may be a bit of a sitting duck in a straight line. I guess we're going to find out here, but we've got Alonso for company. The two Mercs, surprisingly, third and fourth. So it's going to be, uh, it's quite good actually for us. You know, Lando and Leclerc are two nearest championship rivals. They're down the order. They're going to have to come back through some traffic. And we have a good chance just to try and hold off people, despite having maybe a slow car on a straight line. We're going to find out as we're going to get straight into this sprint race on this Saturday as we go to five red lights. And we're underway for 12 laps around Sao Paulo. It's a crack Cracking start for us. It's a shocking one for Fernando Alonso. Not for the first time in a sprint race as well here. As he's down the order. He's down to fifth place. Lando up to fourth uh, momentarily as they swap positions. But the two Mercs are surprisingly the next two cars near to me. Hamilton pulling out to make the move on Russell in the race weekend where he's announced his retirement from Formula One. He's fighting up the order to try and maximize his position here. Maybe the announcement giving him some motivation to go out with a bit of a bang. He's up into second place as we cross the line for the second lap, sitting purple, of course, first one to cross the line. And so far, so good. But once they get DRS, that's when I'm going to be a little bit worried. I mean, to be fair right now, Lap two, Hamilton's already closing in, two tenths behind, but we're going to hold him off for now. But for how long can we do that? And like I said, once DRS is a factor, this is going to be where they're maybe going to be a bit dangerous versus myself in a straight line. Because as we go defensive, Hamilton pulls out to the outside and he's broken really late to try and go the long way around. We just managed to keep the position. It's always going to be difficult there on the outside, but that's just the first try that Hamilton will get in this race. There's going to be plenty of opportunities for him and the rest of them to all open up that rear wing and have a go at me as we go on to lap five. So nearly halfway through this sprint, Hamilton goes for it. He's sent it. He's up into first place momentarily. We're side by side through the center S. He's got the lead, actually, as we have to step out the throttle as the rear end steps out a little bit, snaps at me. But now it's our turn to have DRS. We go to the left. Hamilton completely squeezes me out of room. He did not want to give up the left-hand side. So we have to go to the outside and go the long way around. And behind us, uh, Alonso's also trying that on Russell and onto the two Red Bulls as well as we're on the inside up the hill and we're going to creep back up into P1, wrestle the car a little bit on the exit. And actually, here's a replay because, as I said, Alonso was trying that and Verstappen as well. And this is quite crucial for the championship. This is the wrong Red Bull overtaking and getting up one more position. Verstappen, who's nowhere near the championship fight, overtaking his teammate Lando, who is in the fight, in up into fifth place. And you can see there Alonso also got Russell. So being on the right-hand side, of that part of the circuit seemed to be the, the real uh, t money ticket in the house as uh, Hamilton once again comes through to try and make a move. We squeeze the left. Hamilton is adamant that he wants the inside line. He's actually forced me into a mistake there as we have a little bit of a front double lock moving to the racing line. I tried to do what Hamilton did to me and just make sure he didn't go, go to the left, but Hamilton was so quick there that he got his nose in. If I kept turning left in that straight, there would have been a horrendous crash. So he's put me into a bit of a, an awkward situation there but thankfully we maintain P1 and we are going to maintain P1 all the way up to now here cutting on towards the last lap of the Grand Prix. I did briefly break DRS of Hamilton around lap 8 to 9 but he's now crept in back under one second, half a second now as we go on to the last lap of this sprint. Alonso stayed ahead of Russell, Verstappen ahead of Lando which is good news for me at least that Lando and Leclerc are outside the top 5 here so we will be gaining some decent points on them in the the championship as Lewis comes through. Look at the left-hand side mirror. So close to making maybe a lunge down the inside, but we just 
have enough with the battery to stay ahead on that first DRS zone. But now we're coming through to the second zone, a little bit wide at this final corner, but we get a good enough exit, get the power down, and we've got enough battery to deploy all the way up the hill to the run to the line. But look at how quick Hamilton is. Well, hang on a minute. Hamilton, Hamilton. Oh, he's come through and stolen it. Has he, has he actually done? Oh my God. Lewis Hamilton has just come and smash and grabbed what should have been a nailed on sprint win for me. Maybe going wide at that corner was it because I had battery for this entire straight and yet that wasn't enough. Hamilton's DRS was powerful enough to pull in through across the line and he won it by... I don't know, like, what a lot of, Oh, my God, that is so, so tiny. What's that? Like, half the front wing depth, and he's won this sprint. Unbelievable. In the race weekend, like I said, where he announced his retirement from Formula 1 today in, in this episode, he's only gone and won the sprint race in Brazil, and he will be on the full pole position for Sunday's Grand Prix. Unreal. I, I actually can't believe that because I thought, okay, I've got I've, I can, I've got enough percentage battery just to keep it on deploy the whole way up. It didn't matter. The difference was that DRS zone, the rear wing opening. I, Hamilton obviously probably also deploying battery himself, but it was the DRS making the difference there. And despite being f far enough back, I thought, he just reeled this in like nothing. That was incredible uh, overspeed. Kind of almost like the same way, obviously, Gasly overtook him uh, when Gasly got that infamous his first podium at Sao Paulo, that drag race to the line, really. It rolls reverse this time. Hamilton's the one that comes out victorious, but we're still in the front row for tomorrow's race, which is still a positive, and Lando's down in P6. Leclerc P10. Ferrari had a howler as they both finished behind even the McLarens today. Real big stinker from Ferrari, which is good news for us as a team, because Ricardo is down there in P13, so it's really just myself versus the two Ferraris in terms of the constructors' fight, so yeah, still a lot of positives, and we've got some rain tomorrow so surely my setup is going to come towards me and be the benefit let's go to that grid welcome along then to where heroes and history are made it's where the 2008 title was decided in the very final corner just one year later jensen button stormed through from 14th on the grid to claim his one and only drivers championship it's time then for the sao paulo grand prix into Lagos, always a very special race here in Brazil. It's a 2.7 mile circuit with nine left turns and six right turns for a total of 15 corners. It's a wet one today as well, so grip and visibility will be at a premium. And the drivers will need to be careful coming up the hill in sector three, the scene of many an accident over the years. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and the owner driver alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Fernando Alonso, Russell, Verstappen, Albon, Oscar Piastri, Leclerc, Sainz, Norris, Gasly, Ocon, Magnussen, Bottas, Perez, Liam Lawson, Joe, Ricardo, Stroll, Sonoda, Hulkenberg and Logan Sargent. With preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Well, it's not going to be plain sailing for our drivers today, although with the sky falling as it is, perhaps sailing isn't too far from the truth. Anthony Davidson could be a wet one today. Great to have you with us. What are your thoughts? It is a touch damp, isn't it? Well, as a driver, there are three big things to worry about when racing in these kind of conditions. Standing water, tyre temperature and visibility. Judging distance to the cars around you is really tricky when you're driving through the vast amounts of spray that these wet weather Pirelli tyres kick up. You know what? I've never been so happy to see rain falling for one of these race starts because this is exactly what we needed. Intermediate conditions here for the start of this uh, Brazilian GP. And we know from Friday qualifying, I had the pace to be on pole by two tenths because of the setup we have 
the extra downforce. It's going to be a massive benefit for us today and is going to, it's going to give us an advantage the entire time until it dries up. I think it will dry up eventually. The forecast for his, uh, it says about maybe halfway to maybe one third of the race left. It's going to be slick ties maybe or at least stop raining. So we'll see when it actually transitions. But uh, as, it, as long as it keeps intermediate, we'll have that advantage and hopefully we can actually just get Hamilton early on and sail off into the distance maybe for a pretty easy first stint in this GP as we go to lights out for the Brazilian Grand Prix. Hamilton on pole though, lights out and away we go. The eight-time world champion gets a good getaway. We do as well. Alonso, it's another poor one for him as Russell again jumps him up to third place. Piastri up to P5. Hamilton's gone a bit slow in the center S, you know. He was initially really strong into turn one, but he really lost some time and actually held us up so much that Russell has come in. The slingshot off the center S to get up into second, maybe even first now into the break zone. We nearly completely career into the back end of Russell. Double lock up for us. We're off on the runoff area and we're down to P6 because we had to stamp on the brake pedal to stop a pretty, a pretty much a race ending crash there because we were so close to the Mercedes rear end. That would have been a hefty bit of uh, front wing damage as we dive it back down the inside of Fernando Alonso though. Such is the confidence we have in the corners. Like this is entirely our kind of, you know, uh, part of the race really. And it's only a matter of time and now we just have to kind of cut back through this traffic. But I really feel like we will inevitably get into P1. It's just about actually doing the job as Hamilton re-overtakes Russell as the two are side by side in sector two. Hamilton takes the lead of the Brazilian Grand Prix once again but it's the man in second place that caused all the chaos. Russell was so aggressive and it just got caught out really with how close he was to us in the break zone. But look at Piastri there in third place and the McLaren absolute stonks for the Australian driver in the Papaya Orange as we dive to the inside for the, of the second Aston Martin of the day. Russell gets squeezed out by Hamilton and we're going to get up into P4 and now have a bit of clean air to chase after Piastri who's all over the back of Russell having been squeezed out for P1. So Hamilton has a bit of breathing room in P1 now and we have some breathing room of our own ahead of two Aston Martins. But we have a replay from Lando Norris is on board and this is him getting held up by a very wayward Leclerc in the Ferrari so our two championship rivals holding each other up. The Ferrari blocked Lando so much that he got overtaken by both Alpine cars. So it's a disaster on lap one for Norris. He's down two positions. Leclerc didn't exactly have a great one either. He's now battling on the Alpines and he's behind his teammate. He's the wrong Ferrari in the, in the second position here, to be honest, in terms of coming back for points in the championship. And there we are going off in the distance, having avoided Russell. And we've got a replay from Verstappen's on board as well because he got overtaken by Piastri into turn one. And uh, I think he loses maybe another position, but Piastri does well to go around the outside ahead of us. You've got to uh, watch the Aston Martin. Wayward comes back and Verstappen has damage. That is going to be a pit stop, I think, an early one. So Verstappen's race is pretty much already ended with the very early stop. Uh, for that front wing damage as we look to try and set our eyes on Piastri. Not quite close enough to make a move into turn one here on lap three, but we are going to be close enough to make a move into sector two. And like I said in, on lap one, we just have that confidence to just dive it anywhere where we want, place the car where we want, because we have that extra downforce with this setup. And it's so easy overtaking Piastri. I know he's in a McLaren that's so much slower, but it is just feeling easy in sector two. So we've got yellow flags behind. And oh no, I think I saw a Ferrari going slow in the minimap, you know. I think that might be one of the Ferraris. Is it going to be Leclerc? Is it going to be Leclerc? It might be absolute pain. No, thankfully for him and Ferrari's championship hopes in the drivers, it's not Leclerc. It's Carlos Sainz that is out. But honestly, that's pretty pretty painful for him because remember when we thought Sainz was going to be in this title fight and, you know, now in the second half of the season, he's just really flip-flopped, uh, you know, swap positions with Leclerc in terms of the breadwinner. And I think that's his second or third DNF of the entire scene is, uh, uh, season as well with a mechanical failure. So that's just really quite frustrating for the Spaniard. And uh, on the virtual, car, uh, virtual safety car restart, we're actually very close to Russell. I kind of think like me and Russell gained a bit too much time there on that virtual, uh, virtual safety car restart. We weren't this close to Hamilton. So Hamilton's uh, gap has been eroded a little bit. And now we're right up under half a second behind Russell. 
and just look at the amount of time we're gaining up this crest before we go down the hill in to the at the end of the sector two it's just it's crazy the acceleration we have just because of that higher rear wing the higher front wing as well is just it's just mad so we we, we we be patient we could have maybe made a move around the outside of Russell, but instead we may as well just wait patiently and make the move on the main straight, pull out plenty of battery to use of course in these conditions where you're braking for much longer. It's a slight lock up for us as we go a little bit deeper, Russell as well, not too hot into turn one. And it's actually in the end just a very calm move up into P2 and now we can set our sights on Sir Lewis Hamilton. One second ahead to bridge. And you know what? We've got to savour this battle, you know, because this may be one of the last times we're battling Hamilton in this entire career series, especially for P1. For a race win, this is definitely going to maybe be the last time we're racing Lewis Hamilton in this career series. So let's savour it. Let's have it as we go to lap seven Hamilton in P1 for now. But we're looking to swap that over onto lap eight because like we did with Russell, we're just so quick in sector two. We're so quick up the hill. Oh my God, we're doing the reverse on Hamilton. This is how it felt for us in the sprint race as we pull alongside Hamilton. As we cross the line, we're going to edge ahead of him. He's going to break a bit later, but he's got it all crossed up. Hamilton locks up into turn one. We take it easy. It's the switchback move, and it's P1 for us. And in a funny way, that kind of feels almost like the changing of the guards. You've got the reigning world champion locking up into turn one, going deep. And we've got myself going for our first world championship this season cool calm collected switch to the inside and getting the p1 and we're gonna keep the p1 all the way to lap 17 so many laps just controlling this race in these conditions until we see this message drs enabled and that typically on the game means it's time to switch over to the dries i've been asking my engineer this entire time you know tire status weather condition he's been flip-flopping about like in vegas not really sure when to go this is definitely the time to now come in for the dries with the amount of laps we've got left i'm thinking we go on to medium tires i did think about maybe doing the softs but i think that's a bit too many laps to go uh, for the soft compound so it's going to have to be medium even though technically the medium hasn't been a great race tyre for this my team car this entire game but it is what it is we're going to have to go on to it the hards will just be absolutely horrendous in these cold conditions so we come out 2.4 stop not bad Russell's come in with us so Hamilton stayed out surprisingly he was the lead Mercedes and he's chosen to stay out so he fancies his chances of going a little bit quicker in these damper conditions still on the inters whereas I think we're going to have much better pace because although it looks so wet out there it's going to be night and day grip difference like turning in getting on the power earlier I mean it already you can tell we've got that extra grip into these last corners purple second sector the only problem is for us in the rest of this race is Lando Norris sets a fast lap of the Grand Prix so he's continued on for a second lap on Inters whilst most of us are now coming in uh, I was going to say though the only problem maybe for us in this race in terms of our pace is that you may have seen on the bottom right our engine is a little bit worn out now we are getting to the end of a life cycle of one of the ICEs so that might hinder us a little bit in a straight line even more so uh, because of our setup of course uh, as we get to dries but there you go Hamilton stayed out a lap and he's come out behind Russell not even just myself so that probably means Lando Norris's attempt at staying out for a second lap is just not going to work out for him he's 10 seconds ahead of Lawson and we're gaining about two tenths on these guys every corner so Norris he was running about P9 to 10 I think before we all start to come in so by the time he makes his pit stop he actually might be out the point so his day might go from bad to even worse for our championship rivals we catch up to the Williams also on intermediate oh he spun it Lawson Lawson spun it. He's blocked us on circuit. We've had to stamp on the brake pedal. He reverses onto the grass. Hamilton stopped on circuit. Both Mercedes cars had to stamp on the brake pedal. All three of us were caught up in the safety car. Has come out. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Do you know what that means? Norris is in the pits. And he's going to get a free pit stop. Oh, my God. 
God. It, it's Agent Lawson. It's Agent Lawson. He might be driving for a Williams, but let's not forget who he used to be with as a driver academy. Liam Lawson used to be in the Red Bull Academy. It's Agent Liam Lawson. He's spun it and caused the safety car that has allowed Lando Norris to <laughs> come out in the lead of this race. As we catch the safety car, he's P1. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, I don't know how we didn't just crash there. Thank God for the ghosting. That could have been horrendous. We probably should have crashed into the safety car just then, as I really misjudged how slow it was going. But, oh, my God. I was just so furious with what just happened, because in front of my eyes, it's happened. Lando's gone from what would have been outside the points to P1. He's leading this race now um, because myself and the Mercs had to slam on the brakes to avoid Lawson spinning. That pileup caused the safety car, but it was because of Lawson, the way he parked it on circuit as he spanned. So it really is Agent Lawson has come to the rescue for his old Red Bull Academy team as Lando is going to lead this Grand Prix away uh, onto green flags. And now this is going to be one interesting end to the Grand Prix. We've got slightly overcast conditions, so it's a colder circuit than yesterday. We were pretty okay in this sprint. I don't know how quick Lando's going to be because he was in traffic for most of the sprint. So we're going to have to find out now as we get on going and we're right up the gearbox. We're pulling out for the move for P1, but we get that typical illegal overtake glitch that's still not been fixed in this game this long into it where it's a completely illegal move I've made across the line and yet it's telling me it's illegal so we had to give up the position into turn one and re-engage with Norris as we get very very close you can see how aggressive I'm wanting to go with this because I've got the grip between my teeth to try and get this P1 a P1 we really should have if it wasn't for that safety car from Lawson but oh god the circuit is a little bit slippery still, you know. It looks pretty bone, bone dry, but that was a definite snap of oversteer at a corner that is usually pretty much flat out, especially on this low level of fuel on lap 22 of 36. So we're nearly just outside one second. And by the time we get to lap 23, my jaw is dropped on the floor because Lando starts pumping in purple lap times after purple lap times and is now 1.4 ahead of us. We're just narrowly staying ahead of Gasly by 7 tenths. So he's not really challenging us, but we're not pulling away either. And I think also part of that is because our engine is a bit worn, you know. Look at the bottom right, orange icon, but look at that. Another purple, lap 26. He's 2.8 seconds away. It's not like I'm going slow. I'm setting a reasonable lap time. You know, he's doing a 1.10.6. I've done a 1.10.9. So we're three tenths away from his pace, but the damage has been done. He's pumped in those laps early on the restart, and he's just he's just driven off into the distance. And like I said, this engine is a bit worn. The internal combustion engine is 67% worn. It's a lot of wear. We started the weekend with about 45% wear. So like we said a few times this season, with the 16 race calendar, there seem to be a lot of wear. Like the scaling seems to be very aggressive on the engine wear. So that's also going to slow us up in a straight line as well as obviously our higher downfall setup and you know not having DRS on the car ahead of us just means that we're unable to really gain on the Red Bull who's quicker in a straight line and quicker in the corners as well because you're just pulling away three seconds on lap 28 we put in a pretty good second sector and we actually managed to nick the fastest lap away from Lando with a 1.10.2 um, but that is going to be the only solace because by the time we get to lap 36 the sun is out and Lando is leading by nearly six seconds we're 1.3 ahead of Gasly who's having another incredible race it's going to be another podium for the Frenchman in the Alpine Piastri though also another uh, one to really note P4 for McLaren. Leclerc, P6. So he's recovered from what was P9, but Leclerc is really going to lose out in the championship fight versus myself and Norris, one and two. And this is why for most of the season, it's been me and Lando because we've been the consistent people up there on the podiums. And you can see why. And you can see the, the actual evidence of that here. Leclerc, he was in the 
title fight going into this race weekend. He might just be out of it after this one because Lando Norris is P1. We're P2 as we come through the last couple of corners. And this man has absolutely finessed the entire race. Red Bull have finessed this race. Lando Norris wins the Brazilian GP. And we have to settle for second place. I can't believe it. We, we got smash and grabbed in the sprint by Hamilton. And then we got smash and grabbed by Agent Lawson working for Red Bull and Lando Norris. Incredible. What a... Yeah, I mean, it's still a strong weekend, but oh, what could have been? Could have been P1 in both days. We've witnessed some great battles around the historic curves of Interlagos today, and they've taken a fantastic win. What do you think it was today, Ants, that gave them the edge over the competition? I think we'll chalk this one up to a deft touch on the brake pedal. That's allowed them to challenge down the inside into the braking zones, and ultimately, if you do that often enough, you end up winning the race. It was great to watch as well, though, wasn't it? Forget strategy, forget tyre management. Who doesn't love a good old-fashioned scrap? Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sports that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. It's a very important first place for Norris and Red Bull, because remember, he's, this is off the back of two DNFs in a row for Lando, so he needed this to get him back into order for this championship fight. For us, it's, it's frustrating because I wanted to maximise this weekend with that setup we had in those wet conditions. And we, we really would have if, if it wasn't for that uh, Lawson spin and the safety car. And because of that engine wear also, looking ahead to next episode, the next one in Jeddah, I think we don't have enough components. I think we're going to have to take a penalty at Jeddah because I think I'm actually on my last ICE, which is now 65% worn. So... I really got to hope that maybe Lando has to take a penalty himself as well in these last two races. I don't know. I wouldn't wish that upon uh, upon our rival in the title fight. But in terms of fairness, it would be great. But, uh, you know, whatever the case, we're going to have to get to that bridge at Jeddah. In this one, at least, we've done the best we can with, you know, the, the cards we got dealt, the luck we got dealt in that race. We're still nine points ahead of Lando Norris. Leclerc is 20 point, uh, 28 points off. So he's really, he's still mathematically within a shout. But realistically, it looks... Looks like again it's going to be back to the original two us two brits myself versus lando norris the drivers world championship in the constructors it's blown a bit wider open for that second place battle red bull are now level on points with ferrari they're both 20 points off us you know depending on what ricardo does depending on you know what those two respective teams do they could turn the tide but i'm hoping we've got enough pace just in ourselves to carry this over the line in both championships but this race has certainly set up a very interesting last two at jeddah and then yas marina for the Abu Dhabi grand prix but that has been an, a, a chaotic uh, usual typical sao paulo ra uh, race weekend with rain spins thrills the lot guys if you have enjoyed it be sure to hit that like button let me know what you thought in the comments below if you're here then do get subscribed for weekly formal on content i'll see you guys next time goodbye